hi y'all hey welcome back to my channel if you are new here hi welcome my name is Deborah yes yes I'm not doing that thing anymore and I'm just going to I'm going by my given name now and I suppose I'll talk about it at some point in a different video if I ever get to it but call me Deborah keep things simple but yeah hi I'm so happy to have you here on my corner of the internet and I'm grateful you're here and I hope you stick around for more videos so today I am um, first of all I just wanted to say uh, thank you for all the support from friends that I got on a vlog that I probably uploaded either most likely two videos ago anyway um, and I was just sort of talking about my frustration with YouTube and not um, experiencing the growth that I wanted and a very good friend of mine Jim Jim Jimmy of the Jim's TV here on YouTube uh, reached out to me privately and was really supportive and offered you know very interesting video ideas of videos that I could film that could you know capture audiences and I was so grateful to have received that and thank you Jimmy for reaching out in the way you did I really appreciated that but the point of that all of that is to say that the idea for today's video is not orig originally mine um, she suggested it I mean I have thought about it but I've always been sort of hesitant about um, talking about like adding that other layer of my identity which is being Nigerian to um, my niche here on YouTube. I wasn't sure how I wanted to incorporate that just because I didn't want it to be like the primary focus. Um, mostly because sometimes I don't feel like I'm Niger Nigerian enough. Sometimes I feel like I'm just very a very different kind of nigerian and i'm pretty sure i don't feel alone in this other people i feel sort of the same way but it's a whole nother thing that i could get to in, in a different uh video or like a different platform and talk about in a different way yeah so by the title of this video i am going to be talking about all the things that i've learned as a nigeria who has lived in canada for over nine years now kind of going on 10 years and just sort of the takeaways, the learnings, the big things, the little things. But without further ado, let's just get into it. So this one I had heard about before I moved here, but I didn't want to believe it. But so back home, if somebody invited you, like if you were going out, um, somebody invited you out, you expected them to like cover your food and drinks and like re literally pay for everything you know um which is like such a foreign like foreign and just nonsensical thought to me now but here like if somebody invites you out you better better come with your wallet come with your debit card come with your credit card and cut your uh coat according to your size or according to your cloth i suppose don't do longer trots <laughs> Um, cause you will pay for your food, your drinks, you pay for anything that has to, like, whatever you consume, right? So just because someone has extended you a social invitation does not mean that they are responsible for taking care of you at said invitation. And I think that's absolutely fair, like, people, like, living here is expensive. You can't be expecting, like, people to, like, pay for your shit all the time, like, that's ridiculous. And I mean, like, in any any country any situation i think you should go out with the expectation of covering what you're going to eat or drink and just being able to take care of yourself and sustain yourself that way um i mean there are obvious exceptions i'm i've gone out on like dates for instance where um the other party covered food and drinks and i was very happy for them to do that but i don't go out with the expectation that that's what they're going to do I go out, I have my own money, I look at the menu very carefully, I don't order more than I can pay for because I don't want to be washing dishes at the end of the night. But that's definitely something that's different here. You're expected to take care of yourself, cover your meals when you go out. Cover your meals, your whatever it is, this is the situation when you go out and you can't 
let that burden fall onto somebody else and i think that's absolutely sensible <laughs> um i grew up in lagos Nigeria, and if anyone has ever lived in lagos you know how very urbanized it is but moving here um to canada and to i've lived in british columbia and alberta and there's just something beautiful about nature um, in this country one thing that i think white people or maybe north americans let's just say white people sort of know how to do is really really preserve nature and s recognize um, i'm not saying they're perfect at this because let's not even get into that but they do really recognize the importance importance of nature and preserving it as much as they can in terms of like national parks provincial parks and it's just gorgeous i mean i i uploaded a vlog like so my family lives a couple hours away from me and on the drive there i'm just always in awe of like the mountain range and just how gorgeous it is and i've learned like to really come to appreciate that because back in nigeria I, that was not in my immediate surrounding and it's not because those were absent in nigeria there's like lots of jungle and forests and mountains um there but i just never got the chance to really live in areas like that um i suppose you can learn that lesson anywhere but for my particular case, I learned that lesson, the, the beauty in nature when I moved here. And then another thing that I've learned, um, and I think I started thinking about this probably before I came to Nigeria. Um, I also consider myself something of a feminist. I don't go around announcing that. But one thing that I realized is that although Canada or North America or European countries or wherever paint themselves as you know sort of progressive in terms of gender equality and all of that I feel like both countries I can't speak for any other country but I feel like both countries so Nigeria and Canada still sort of have the same gender norms and slash or expectations that are really unfair to women um, that expects women to you know bear children be you know caregivers home stewardesses is, is, you know to be caregivers um be the ones taking care of the children working as well you have that added layer in this country um and also just being the one to take care of the home and the family and all that while the man really just has maybe a couple functions in the household and even though canada presents itself as more progressive there is still that gender expectation um i think it's it's certainly worse in nigeria um but it's like those gender norms i just only did just only present themselves in a slightly different way in this country just based on you know differences in culture but they still definitely exist here as well so just because you're moving to Ubudu, Ubudu does not mean that uh things are that much different gender wise <laughs> and then another thing that i've learned or that this country has encouraged me to do is to be more of an open-minded thinker and i and i feel like that may also be because i went to university in this country um in university you're really encouraged to think outside of the box you're encouraged to well, I found that university really encouraged me to challenge conventional norms or challenge the way that I thought about or related with conventional norms and ideals and just sort of be open to seeing things a little more differently. And I think that's why um, I've been able to, I think that's why my values have sort of shifted away from the average Nigerian direction. I don't think it's shifted in a bad way. I still think I still think I'm a good person. I still think I'm contributing to society. Um just, you know, I, I don't think it's wrong to have different values from others. But <clears throat> for sure one thing that um living in Canada has encouraged and, and I've learned from living in Canada is just, you know, really the need to be open um <clears throat> to be open to other ideas to be open open to like 
other people's way of living you know you don't have to necessarily accept them because you will see a lot of people living in ways that contravene what you're used to or what you think is normal but that doesn't mean it's wrong and i've had to really really unlearn the, the notion that anybody that does something differently from me is doing something wrong and i think unfortunately that's definitely something that i brought with me from Nigeria is to just judge people that are different from me and I've learned that doesn't help anybody so don't do it <laughs> and finally I think very important is that anybody can succeed in this country and I don't mean like Jeff Bezos is that how you say his name that Amazon guy I don't mean Bezos level or Elon Musk level success but like by success, I mean you can, you know, make enough money to own a comfortable house, a nice comfortable house, maybe a car, live a comfortable life, a fairly comfortable life. You just, you just need to be willing to put in the work, right? I'm not promising like instant overnight success. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire. Um, you can live a very comfortable life here um, if you are willing to work hard. Um, but that is not the case in Nigeria because why? Corruption. Um, you know, you can go to a university, get your degree, do everything that you're supposed to do, follow the path. But there's no guarantees your life is going to be good. You know, no matter how hard you work or how hard you worked, just because of the systemic corruption and other issues plaguing my country, Nigeria. So, um, but let's circle back to Canada for a little bit. So I know I said that, you know, if you work hard and you really willing to, you know, tighten up your boots and do the hard work, you can su succeed here. While that is true, um, I'm not going to say that there are absolutely no systemic issues in this country as well that may pre prevent you from, you know, living sort of a good life. Um, I'm talking about like indigenous people and just all of the crap that they are still putting up with and internalized racism still exists. Uh, this is not the video for that, but the point is, um, yeah, you, you'll work hard, you can be moderately successful, but I'm still aware that there are really systemic, like some big systemic issues that this country still needs to address to make sure that the system works equally for everyone. And on that note, that is everything that I have to share. I don't know how many of those points will make it into the actual video, but I really had a lot of fun sitting down and thinking about this. I think I like was able to come up with this list in like maybe 10 minutes. I guess I had it just sort of floating around in my head and just needed an avenue or needed the opportunity to talk about them. But I really had a lot of fun sitting down and doing this. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. And I hope that if you're in Nigeria and watching this, you're planning to move into Canada, you just, this, this video sort of sets, manages your expectations a little bit. Um, I'm not saying, no, Canada is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful country. I really love it here. And it is what you make of it in the end. But I hope somebody finds this video helpful um yeah but that is pretty much everything i have to share for today thank you so much for watching and staying tuned until the end um and i'll see you next time in another video